Thanks. On behalf of the Green Building Council of Australia, it is my pleasure to welcome you to today's Green Staff Fit Out Scoping Consultation Paper Update. So we at the Built Green Building Council of Australia recognise the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia. Yes. We pay our respects to elders past and present and recognise their continuous connection to lands, skies and waters. Australia's first people are the world's oldest continuous living culture and Australia's first practitioners of sustainability. They have shaped the built environment for millennia with purpose-built architecture that responds to the unique character and challenges of the landscape. The Green Building Council of Australia recognises the power of the built environment to shape a future that cares for both pe people and the planet. The choices we make today matter for the future of tomorrow. Um, so now, before we get started, I'd just like to mention um, the Q&A box will be active for anyone having technical issues on the call today. Um, so I'll be reviewing that. Please do put your hand up if you're having any issues. Our speakers will not be taking questions during the session today, but um, we'll direct you to the consultation paper for your valuable feedback. Finally, I'd like to give thanks to the Future Focus Partners. Um, and Gabby, I'll just get you to thank you. And our Circular Economy Partners, whose support makes today's course possible. It's now my pleasure to introduce your host for today's session. Joining us today, I've got Taryn Cornell, Senior Manager for Strategy and Development, and Gabrielle Pavicic, Technical Advisor here at the GBCA. I'll hand, now hand over to Taryn to introduce today's briefing session. Thank you, Taryn, over to you. Thank you so much, and uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. We're really excited to have you here. Um, so the purpose of today is to share with you our proposed vision for the Green Star Fit Outs rating tool and some of the proposed improvements for the tool. Now, at this point uh, in the game, uh, everything is up for grabs. So we are really keen to make sure that we get feedback from you uh, to make sure that this is the right direction for the future of the Green Star Fit Outs rating tool. Uh, you can see on the screen now uh, a QR code uh, that will allow you to access the consultation paper. So the consultation paper is a much more detailed version of what we will go through today. And in that includes a whole bunch of information that we're asking you to uh, provide feedback on uh, and tell us whether or not you support the direction that we're heading in. Uh, in order to do that, we actually have a survey, uh, and that is a separate link here, so that's available on your screen. We will also put uh, information or links to those two documents uh, in the chat as well, if you didn't want to use the QR code and you just want to link uh, to the web browser. They're also available for download on our website, uh, so if you wanted to look back later, you're welcome to go and take a, a look through the GBCA's website. So today we're going to run you through broadly five things, and this echoes the breakdown in the consultation paper itself. So we're going to talk a little bit about future focus uh, and how Green Star Fit Out fits into that. Uh, we'll tell you a little bit of background on the Green Star Interiors rating tool. Uh, we also have the global mega trends that drive change, uh, and that's really the, the thing that uh, helps inform and influence the direction of the rating tool. Uh, then importantly, Gab is going to take you through uh, our big vision for Green Star Fit Out and then the five key changes to the rating tool itself and how we want to make it a, a functional tool that helps you uh, apply sustainability to your projects. So Green Star Future Focus, this is a long running program we've had really since 2018. Uh, in 2020, we launched Green Star Buildings. Uh, some of you may be familiar with that rating tool. That was really the first of this whole suite of rating tools that is setting the direction for sustainability in the built environment for the next 15 to 20 years. Uh, in addition to buildings, we've also released the Green Star Home Standard. We released a Green Star Performance Rating Tool last year uh, as a technical release. And we're currently working on the Green Star Communities. But very importantly and very excitingly, we are now starting development on Green Star Fit Outs, which is uh, the last cab off the rank for this whole program of works. Uh, we originally were going to release Green Star Fit Outs a couple of years ago, but the pandemic gave us a little bit of pause for thought. We wanted to see uh, how that would shift how we felt about fit outs and the way in which they're getting used. And so uh, now that we're kind of on the other side of that, uh, we uh, have taken a little bit of what we've learned over the last few years and we're looking to implement that into the fit outs uh, tool in the future as well. 
the development time frame for this. So as we mentioned, we're in very early phasing of uh, the rating tool development. So this is where we really want your feedback on the direction of the tool. We're not going to be talking lots and lots of detail, although there is some detail about the idea of things like credits uh, that we're proposing in the consultation paper. Um, but really, this is about the direction of travel. Uh, and so we're working on that currently. Consultation will be open for a couple of months and we'll get your feedback. Once we have your feedback and we're, we're kind of confirmed on the big parts of the tool and the way that it works uh, and the things that it should be tackling, most importantly, we'll then move into development. We will have another round of consultation uh, sometime next year, which is the detail of the rating tool, so the credits. Uh, and then we'll aim to have a technical release towards the end of next year or the start of 2025. So Green Star Interiors to date, uh, it has been a really successful rating tool for a rating tool that was not a um, necessarily an especially uh, big tool. You know, we have the, the other tools and they are really the ones that we've had lots of people get behind. Uh, but you can see in this graph that we have uh, showing the number of uh, certifications over time uh, that the both the office interiors and the Green Star interiors rating tool uh, have had a lot of success. Uh, we've got at least 250 projects that have been certified. We've got 188 projects registered and of those 57 were in the past 12 months. Um, we see especially the success of the fit outs rating tool, or sorry, the interiors rating tool uh, really carried in many ways by things like volume assessment. So that's where uh, project teams have a standardized approach that they want to take to the rating tool and they get certain credits assessed up front and then they apply those to uh, rollouts and fit outs across that. So if you think about uh, commercial retail fit outs, uh, bank branches, those sorts of things, uh, there's a, um, a beautiful fit out that you can see there on the right. Um, and that's that's really the success of the tool. Um, and so here you can also see the kinds of people that are using the rating tool. Uh, so we've had a lot of uptake from commercial retailers. Uh, so things like uh, brands, uh, Country Road is one, um, brands that are really rolling out uh, fit outs across multiple locations uh, and also commercial corporates. So they are uh, fit outs that uh, cover multiple levels in a commercial building. Uh, we do also see other users um, in this space, so tertiary education institutions, fitting out classrooms, et cetera, um, and uh, a few other bits and pieces. Um, but we think that there's broader application for the tool, especially if we get it right. Uh, so fashion retailers, hospitality retailers, uh, healthcare and supermarkets are really places that we think that there are options and opportunities for the rating tool to be used in the future. Uh, also in terms of, um, the, the old rating tool, the current rating tool, I should say, Green Star Interiors, uh, we see that the things that people target most frequently are things related to operational outcomes, energy and watering monitoring and, and efficiency, uh, indoor environment quality, uh, and things especially around uh, toxicity uh, in the environment, so um, non-toxic and low volatile compound uh, paints and products uh, and, and other responsible products sourcing. So we think that that's still going to be a really strong focus. Um, however, we think that there are other areas of opportunity. So uh, with something like the responsible products framework that we've developed for Green Star Buildings, looking to expand that into Green Star fit outs, um, it would be a, a huge potential opportunity. Um, and the reuse and life extension of materials, resource recovery planning and social inclusion are big areas that we think uh, uh, don't currently get a lot of uh, coverage in the rating tool or aren't necessarily taken up a lot in the rating tool. And so we think that there's a big opportunity for that in the future of the rating tool. So uh, what have we learned from Green Star Interiors uh, and those, you know, 200 plus fit outs that have used it? Uh, we see that uh, projects have paid most attention to how they can make, make spaces healthier. So that is a real strength of the current tool. Uh, we see that it works really well for large fit outs or at volume. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, the two kind of biggest consumers of the tool or people that um, take up the tool are those ones that want to roll out uh, projects. Uh, so they're the volume users or those large fit outs. So um, often multi-floor uh, corporate fit outs. Um, and that obviously then is reflected in that it's most used for office and commercial retail. Um, we also see that uh, materiality and uh, better products are things that um, are 
people are most using in the rating tool and that it really drives a selection of good product. Uh, the other thing that we have observed in the rating tool is the relationship between the base building and the fit out. So uh, at the moment in the Green Star Interiors rating tool, if you're in a good building, that will help you a long way to get a good rating. Uh, and so we think that maybe that's something that we need to uh, refocus on a little bit because uh, if you're in a bad building that doesn't mean you can't have a really great fit out. So what are the global megatrends that are driving change? Uh, so if we look at the megatrends we have three major megatrends that you will see um, and this is something that carries through all of our future focus rating tools but specifically for, um, for fit outs looking at resources and circularity the circular economy is absolutely something that's very important for green star fit outs and for fit outs generally given that that's uh, the, the place in the built environment where we see the biggest churn uh, at, the, at the highest rate. Uh, health and well-being, uh, we know obviously from the existing rating tool that this is a really important aspect um, and obviously, you know, as a global megatrend that aligns. Uh, so ensuring health and well-being and people and equity are, you know, key focuses of the rating tool as well. And then lastly, but definitely not least, uh, climate action. So moving towards that net zero emissions, having a pathway for that and, and also specifically addressing embodied and upfront carbon because that's such a big part of what goes into a fit out. And we can see that that also then aligns with the challenges that you see for fit outs. So 30% uh, of all commercial building waste is fit out churn. So that's a huge amount of just, uh, you know, um, getting in and then and then spitting it out at the end. Uh, we see a 16% increase in productivity for healthier offices. Um, and so health and well-being uh, not only is, is nice to have, it's actually a really great thing to do. And it, and it really means that people flourish when they are in those environments. Uh, and about 10% of global energy consumption comes from fit out. So uh, that's a really key thing for understanding how we can look at being efficient, but also uh, be powered by renewables, uh, have no fossil fuels on site, uh, and really um, driving that reduce uh, reduction in uh, our impact on the climate. So now I'm going to hand over to the wonderful Gabrielle, and she's going to take you through our vision for Green Star Fit Out and the five key changes that we want to see uh, in the rating tool. So thank you very much. Hello, everyone. So like Taryn said, I'll be taking you through our vision for Green Star Fit Outs, what a great fit out looks like um, and what we're imagining for the tool. So our vision for fit outs at a glance. Our proposed vision for FitArts is firstly that we are building less, we are building well, reusing more and thinking about the future impact. So in each FitArt, we also want to ensure that we are creating a place that is good for you, that is built responsibly and really makes you want to be there. And thirdly, we want FitArts to be fossil fuel free, highly efficient, powered by renewables and built with lower upfront carbon. So our vision is that world leading green star fit outs will fully realize these ideas and really exemplify a new approach to designing and building, deconstructing and reusing fit outs. So our question to you, which we'll put forth in the survey is do you support each of these vision statements? So please do open that up, um, have a look through and let us know your thoughts, your ideas, your suggestions, um, we really want to hear from you and this is your opportunity. So another focus that we're looking at is moving towards a circular model of use. So in a resource constrained world, how we get, use and dispose of materials and make the most of our current resources will be really key for a successful and sustainable global economy. So we really want to move towards a circular model of use. Um, and understanding a lot of people are familiar with the concept of circular economy, but it is um, a term that kind of has a lot of definitions out there. So when we're looking at that, we're really looking at circular economy as a system where materials never become waste and nature is regenerated. So that means that products and materials are kept in circulation through processes like maintenance, reuse, refurbishment, recycling and composting. And now the circular economy is a mechanism to really tackle climate change and other global challenges like biodiversity loss, waste and pollution, 
And this is by decoupling economic activity from the consumption of finite resources. So our question to you that we're putting forth is, do you support our proposal to have circularity as a focus area in Green Star Fit Outs? So again, please do let us know your thoughts and your ideas. So reflecting and moving from Green Star Interiors to Green Star Fit Outs, um, we want to work to clarify the types of projects that will be able to be rated using the Green Star Fit Outs tool. So what we're putting forth is that Green Star Fit Outs will rate new fit outs. So in defining that, we're saying that a new fit out is the transformation that occurs to make a space habitable and or meet the user's needs of a space after a lease or purchase agreement has been signed or when the fit out owner is making a major update. So Green Star Fit Outs will not be rating existing fit outs, minor upgrades or upgrades which happen gradually over time. And uh, in the consultation paper, we explain that in a little bit more detail. So please have a read if you're interested. And our question to you is, do you support our proposal for the types of projects which can be rated using the Green Star Fit Outs tool? So again, please let us know. Now, in terms of why we're changing from the name Green Star Interiors to Green Star Fit Outs. So the idea is that Green Star Fit Outs will be providing a simplified framework, which will help applicants navigate how to create a sustainable fit out and get it certified through Green Star. So Green Star Fit Outs will specifically rate the fit out of an interior space. So the fit out is describing the process by which an interior is renovated, um, built or furnished in order to meet the tenant's occupancy requirements. So a Green Star Fit Outs rating will be less concerned with how the building impacts the fit out and more concerned with rating all the aspects of a fit out which are within the control of the tenant or fit out owner. And this change is reflected in the change, change of names from the current tool Green Star Interiors to what will be the new tool Green Star Fit Outs. So again, looking to understand whether you support our proposal for the types of projects which can be rated using the Green Star Fit Outs tool. So in light of focusing on fit outs, we've outlined the project team typically involved in a fit out and their role um, in working on a Green Star fit out based on typical use cases. So we want to know if this captures key groups generally involved in creating a fit out in your experience too. And if you agree with the roles each typically play in Green Star projects, as well as the benefits to each of them. So again, this is outlined in a bit more detail in the paper, but essentially the way we imagine Green Star fit outs to benefit the project team is that the building owner can be the one requiring tenants to get a rating, and this can support their social and environmental sustainability ambitions too. The tenant or fit out owner will be the one achieving a Green Star Fit Out certification. So they're the applicant and they are able to market their achievements. The design team, so including designers and ESD consultants, they're the ones really learning how to create a sustainable fit out using the framework and getting experience as a Green Star accredited professional to actually verify their achievements and certify projects. Suppliers also then come in and play a role. So suppliers are able to have their products included in the Green Star Responsible Products database. And this will be expanded to um, include a lot of fit outs, products and materials. And this provides them an opportunity to present what, what they're doing and the great initiatives that they have in place if they are recognized through our framework. Now where fit out contractors and subcontractors come in, they're really the ones that are gaining really great experience in constructing best practice and world leading fit outs and working on Green Star projects. So again, what we want to know from you is whether the diagram accurately captures the key people or groups are generally involved in creating a fit out in your experience. So let us know if there's anyone that we've missed or that plays a key role uh, in your experience and in your process. Uh, we'd love to hear from you on that. Now looking at where Green Star Fit Outs should be used. So what we're putting forth is that Green Star Fit Outs will be developed with key sectors and the topologies these consist of in mind. So this will ensure that the rating tool stimulates market transformation in sectors of focus, whilst also being applicable to a really broad range of fit out circumstances. Note that we propose to ensure that other sectors not identified as focal areas will still be catered for. Uh, the key difference is that these will be the ones that are engaged with the most and that we'll, we will engage with explicitly and really keep front of mind. 
So the four key sectors that we propose will be focus areas, uh, offices, retail, hospitality, and education fit outs. So these are the sectors where we have identified the most interest and potential to influence widespread transformation of design and construction practices in fit outs. And these also make up a really substantial proportion of fit outs throughout Australia and are responsible for a really significant amount of fit out churn. So we recognize that there is really great potential to increase uptake and make a green stuff fit out far more widely understood term, which is highly recognized through industry by both fit out owners as well as project teams and users of the space. So we really want to address these sort of key sectors. And again, our question to you, do you support our proposal to focus on these key sectors? Let us know your thoughts. So another one of our uh, objectives with the new Green Stuff Fit Outs tool will be about optimizing certification. So that will be a, a real key focus area, I guess, of ours. Um, and we'll be developing Green Stuff Fit Outs to really work effectively for fit outs at volume. Uh, simply put, multiple fit outs of a similar design by a single organization. And we also want to simplify documentation for individual fit outs to ensure the tool is really fit to rate fit outs at varying scales. Now the five key changes we are proposing in Green Star Fit Outs. Number one, Green Star Fit Outs, we're looking to really deliver a new definition of sustainable fit outs. Number two is that we want to be driving supply chain transformation towards circularity. Number three is really about creating spaces you want to be in that are good for you. Four is looking to exceed Paris Climate Agreement carbon targets. And number five is ensuring that we're doing this through supporting you with a simplified framework that's relevant to your scope. So on that first point, delivering a new definition of sustainable fit outs. So Green Star fit outs will feature five new categories representing the issues that will define the next decade. For the first time, we are introducing a circular category in the future focus tools. So this will be our, our first trial of the circular category. And this is really looking at promoting reuse of products and materials and looking at the implementation of circular design and construction principles in fit outs. We'll also have the responsible category. So really looking to ensure that we are recognizing activities that ensure the fit out is designed, procured, built and handed over in a really responsible manner. We'll include a healthy category. So this is about promoting actions and solutions that improve the physical and mental health of occupants. And we'll also include a positive category. So this is encouraging a positive contribution to address key environmental issues of carbon, water, and the impact of materials. And again, last but not least, our people category. So this is about ensuring we're encouraging solutions that address the social health of a community. So we've put forth some draft credits here, you can see. Um, worth having a look through, seeing what you think. What we want to know from you is, do you support the proposed categories as the correct focus areas for the Green Star Fit Arts rating tool? So please do let us know your thoughts on this one. So the second part of the key changes in Green Stuff Fit Arts is about driving supply chain transformation towards circularity. So we need a whole new approach to designing and constructing fit outs with a focus on enabling deconstruction and reuse of fit out components. So we recognize the supply chain has a role to play and we need to be the ones driving the demand. So we propose that Green Stuff Fit Arts will need to include less virgin materials, less toxic materials, more strategies for dematerialization and reuse of fit out components, more products with product stewardship commitments, and more products as a service. As a part of this, we're also proposing to set targets in Green Star for the following as part of a circular economy roadmap. So we recognize that the solution to deal with a fit out at the end of its life, or when components are no longer desired or useful, just cannot be to rip it all out and send it to landfill or incinerated. So we propose to set targets in Green Star 
for the following as part of a circular economy roadmap. So first will be about using as little as possible, as much as necessary. So working on that sort of principle, reusing existing products and materials, procuring products and materials that follow circular design principles, and planning for resource recovery at the end of the fit out life. Our third point here is about creating spaces you want to be in that are good for you. Recognizing that we spend 90% of our time indoors, like I'm sure much of us are now. And the spaces we inhabit have a really direct impact on our health and well-being. So studies show that a well-designed office space, for example, can improve the comfort and well-being of employees, leading to increased job satisfaction, productivity, and retention of talent. So Green Star Fit Outs really seeks to eliminate negative impacts and enhance the well-being of occupants. So we'll do this through things like biophilia and creating connection to nature, ensuring clean air and quality light, uh, and good design that is socially inclusive. Now, over the lifespan of a building and looking at the embodied carbon contribution of a building, including fit outs over the span of about 60 years, we see that whilst the building embodied carbon may increase slightly over time with maintenance and minor refurbishments, over time when there are many fit outs occupying the building over say a 60 year period like demonstrated here, the fit outs themselves are becoming a really huge proportion of the overall embodied carbon. So they're producing a huge amount of waste also in demolition every time a new fit out comes through. So our fourth uh, key change here that we're proposing in Green Stuff Fit Outs is really about ensuring that Green Stuff Fit Outs are exceeding Paris Climate Agreement carbon targets. So Green Stuff Fit Outs will respond to this through requiring being powered by renewables and having no fossil fuels on site, selecting highly efficient fixtures and fittings, and looking at dematerialization, material reuse, and choosing products with lower upfront carbon. And setting out these sort of key dates that will drive our targets and the sort of benchmarks requirements that we're putting in place. So by 2030, we want to ensure that green stuff fit outs are net zero carbon in operations and have 40% up less upfront embodied carbon with the remaining emissions offset. Then by 2050, we're wanting zero carbon emissions in operations and zero upfront embodied carbon in fit outs. So upfront carbon will really be brought into focus in the new Green Stuff Fit Outs rating tool. And this will be building off work that the GVCA are doing with neighbors on the embodied carbon tool. So setting out a bit of a pathway for this as well. How do we actually get to achieving this target? So we propose that all Green Stuff Fit Outs will need to be fossil fuel free, powered by renewables and highly efficient. We propose that upfront carbon reduction requirements will increase from 10% to 40% between the rating tool release and 2030. And we also propose that a six star green stuff fit out will need to offset any non-energy carbon emissions. So again, in line with our climate positive pathway, uh, requirements will retch up over time and that's in order to keep driving industry towards these sort of targets that we're setting in place and really drive progress. So lastly, we're looking to really ensure that the Green Star Fit Outs tool is supporting you through a simplified framework that's relevant to your scope. And as a part of this, and a part of clarifying what a Green Star Fit Out means, we propose to achieve to propose that a four-star rating certification, um, a fit out simply needs to meet the minimum expectation. So they just need to deliver on these 10 key things. We're outlining this and we're again, putting this forth um, to hear what you have to say, to hear what you think. So number one of these 10 key things is looking at ensuring that every fit out is fossil fuel free. So again, looking at focusing on the scope of the fit out. Number two is ensuring they are powered by renewables. Number three is looking to be built with lower upfront carbon emissions. Four is about including responsible products and materials. So that really um, 
looks at utilizing the responsible products framework as well. Five is about ensuring energy efficiency. Six is looking at water use. Number seven, we're looking at enabling reduced operational waste. Eight is looking at improved air quality. Nine is looking at providing great lighting and acoustic comfort. And 10 is that social aspect, so embracing the diversity of our population. So again, these are the 10 key things which we propose every Green Star Fit Out will need to be meeting requirements of um, and no other credits. So looking at a scale from a four star to a six star Green Star Fit Out, in order to be certified at all, the Fit Out will need to be meeting these 10 key requirements. So again, we want to hear whether you support the proposed 10 key things that every Green Star Fit Out will deliver. Please let us know what you think. Um, we want to hear what you have to say on this. This will really guide us in the development of the tool and looking at what sort of requirements we put in place regarding these 10 key things. Uh, so please, again, answer us in the survey. Let us know any thoughts, um, whether you think we're on the right track, whether there is anything else that you believe should be included as you know, a key focal area for what every green stuff it out should be able to deliver. Uh, eager to hear what you have to say. So again, just reiterating that what we're looking at here in terms of a rating tool. So uh, green stuff it outs will run from four to six stars, four stars being the best practice, and that's where a fit out will only need to meet those minimum expectations, which are aligned with the 10 key things seen previously. Uh, a five-star fit out will be representing Australian excellence, so meeting the minimum expectations plus a number of additional points. And then a six-star well-leading fit out will need to be meeting minimum expectations and a further amount of points and will really be an example of a world-leading fit out. So we're really aiming for green staff fit outs to be leading that position for world leadership projects. Again, we want to know your thoughts um, whether you think that to achieve a four-star rating certification, a fit out simply needs to meet the minimum expectations and no other credits. Let us know what you think. And what you need to know going forward, we'll have a little bit of extra time at this, and that's time that you can spend on actually looking through the consultation paper in a little bit more detail if you'd like to, uh, going through the sort of questions that we're asking in detail in that survey. And the key things that you need to take away, I guess, from this session is that scoping paper is addressing Green Star fit outs and the evolution of Green Star interiors. The rating tool is focused on fit out design and construction. And our general vision is to drive healthy, positive and circular fit outs. The rating tool will focus on driving more circular and responsibly built fit outs. And the update will continue to recognize improvements to health and well-being of occupants and drive full decarbonization of fit outs and include upfront carbon reductions. We also want to drive significant uptake of the tool. So that's where we're looking to um, attract different sectors and expand the use of the tool through the sort of framework we're providing. And we are looking from we are looking for feedback from those involved in fit out leasing, design, construction, and defit. So we really want to hear from you. Again, this is your opportunity in the early stages to have a say as to what the Green Star Fit Outs tool could look like. Let us know what you love about the current tool, um, what you struggle with. If you have suggestions, ideas, this is your opportunity. And feedback is due by November the 3rd via our survey. I'll pop up those QR codes again for everyone. So please do have a look at that consultation paper in a bit more detail if there's anything in particular that you want to know more about. Open up that survey. Please let us know what you think. I can't reiterate it enough. Um, you can have a really key role in shaping what the tool looks like.